Welcome to the January 29th special education or special board of education meeting. Um, please take a moment to silence your cell phones and then join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Mr. Hatfield, will you take roll for us, please? Absolutely. Uh, President Rausch? Here. Vice President McFarland? Here. Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach is not going to be here tonight. Member Blazy? Here. Member Ringgold? Here. Member Horowitz? Here. All right, six present. Uh, that takes us to item number two, request to address the board. I have the floor open tonight on the topics surrounding the special meeting. And first on my list is Renita Bonadies. Ms. Bonadies. Good evening. I mentioned at the last meeting that I was told that I could not appeal my FOIA fees to the board president because the new policy says that I must take my case to the civil court. This is a very bad policy. Why require everyone, including the district, to go to court and pay attorneys when the board or superintendent are fully capable of sorting out most issues? Well, of course, this is a policy manual produced by the Thrune Law Firm. I guess Mr. Sharrow was correct when he said that the new policy manual would be beneficial from a lawsuit perspective. I see how the lawyers will guarantee more income for themselves with this policy. Why require litigation? But I digress. MCL 15.234, Section 1, says a body may charge a fee for a public record search. And it continues on to say if the public records, if it has established, makes publicly available and follows procedures and guidelines to implement this section as described in subsection 4. The district has arguably posted procedures though it is refusing to follow those procedures. Thus, until the district has posted procedures that it will follow, the district is not permitted to charge a fee for FOIA responses under Section 4 of MCL 15.234. This undermines your ability to charge any fee for FOIA requests for the past 16 months, as you are not in compliance with FOIA law. However, I was charged fees several times over the period in which the online FOIA policy manual was not recognized as valid, per the interim superintendent's own words. Perhaps all of these fees should be returned and no further, further fees charged until you are compliant with your document online. Another issue is the Open Meeting Act. MCL 15.267 requires a roll call vote and that the purpose be stated in the open meeting in which the roll call is taken. In two of the past three meetings, the board went into closed session without a roll call vote. A roll call is required to go into a closed session, and I would like to respectfully request the minutes for the past few closed sessions since the board did not properly go into a closed session because I would be entitled to that because it was not properly adhered to. And 15.268 has the requirements and permissible purposes of going into a closed section. A pub public body can go into closed session to consider legal advice presented in a written legal opinion. But my three minutes means I'll have to continue this at another time. But I do have documentation for the things I'm quoting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bonadies. <clears throat> Next up is Joe Bonadies. Greetings. As one of the most important things the new superintendent will need to do early in their tenure is to sell the next school bond issue, I would like to go over a couple of things. Someone pointed out to me that there is already a slot on the Midland election calendar for a May 7th, 2024 Midland Public School special election. No one has ever talked about this at a board meeting. If this is a placeholder for the bond vote, I am considering it highly deceptive to not have that mentioned at the December meeting. Lastly, I will not steal Mike's thunder for the HYA report, but I will say that you should pay special attention to the survey analysis plot for state of the district by constituent group. 
In a poorly communicated process with, with respect to the community, you still had 88 surveys or 7% represented by the green dots. That group voted 70% strongly disagree, disagree or neutral with respect to community engagement. There is your canary in the coal mine with respect to voters. Moving on to the 31 Thrun bylaw updates, you will be voting on as a block. Not sure if any of you compared the current version to the new version. Yes, I did about half of them. Here are some lowlights. 2501, board meetings, the old version. Emergency meetings may be held without complying with the above described notice requirements if there is a severe and imminent threat to the health and safety of the public. The new version, same initial front end, if there is a severe and imminent threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the public exists. Congratulations, you now have an even bigger truck you can drive through that loophole. A totally new section under employee conduct and ethics, section 4228. Employees have no expectation of privacy in connection with their use of district property or equipment. The district reserves the right to search a variety of things, including but not limited to the employee's office, desk, files, computer, or locker. Inspections may be conducted at any time at the district's discretion. Another one, which isn't new, first time I saw it, employees may not use their personal communication devices to record communications or images during the work or school day or school-sponsored events, which is interesting with all the improvements to the highly explicit sexual harassment sections, you take away the big weapon to prove abuse. So the Thrun defensive perimeter continues to grow stronger I just wanted to put on the record a sampling of what was just 31 simple numbers in the resolution. Finally, this is a special meeting, the purpose of which is listed as the district leadership profile report. So first, why is it at an unusual time, six versus seven? And second, why are you conducting typical business at a special meeting? Was there some urgent need for the Thrun updates to happen now? Couldn't have waited till the February meeting? This is not in the stated purpose of this meeting. There are your three minutes instead of five, as yet another example of the famous John Adams quote, liberty once lost is never, is lost forever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonadies. Lisa Hansen. Good evening. My name is Lisa Hansen. I'm here to exercise my First Amendment free speech as a parent within our district. A connection to anything else would be a misrepresentation because I'm simply representing me, myself, and I. I want to first compliment you on selecting HYA for your superintendent search and for being so transparent throughout the process. I also want to say yet again publicly that I think you're all good people and I believe that you want the best for our kids and our district. I know you're being guided and funded to follow the DEI path, but my hope is that you'll make merit your top priority as you select our new superintendent. I hope that our new superintendent will focus on academic success. Our district ranks among the best academically in our state, but our state ranks very low nationwide. Literacy and academic achievement are the most inclusive things you can do for our kids. I was able to virtually be in the space of Dr. Elvita King recently, just a few days after we celebrated MLK Day. It was a special moment in time for me and I've been reflecting on it ever since. Martin Luther King Jr. shared many profound and powerful thoughts. He believed that people should not be judged on the color of their skin but on the content of their character. I could not agree more. I believe that everyone should be treated with respect and dignity because all lives matter. Our society has strayed so far from this. In my opinion, due in large, to, due in large part to DEI, we're focused on characteristics rather than character. Kids are being influenced to see skin color rather than kindness, gender identity rather than generosity. I think that most people's intentions are good and that DEI sounds good in theory, but it doesn't seem to be playing out that way. It seems to be causing division. The hyper-focus on external characteristics rather than character seems disruptive in our schools and in our country. It's just my opinion, but this, if this was a natural and organic evolution of our society, it wouldn't need to be so heavily funded and it wouldn't be required within the corporate arena through ESG and CEI. I know it's not popular to challenge DEI, but I'm entitled to my opinion, and I'm entitled to share it without fear of retribution. Same goes for our kids. 
My intention is not to offend anyone. Those that choose to call me names will need to own their own bullying behavior. I'm so grateful that I was raised in an era that taught us sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. It taught us strength and it required us to figure out how to get along with others, not to force others to get along with us. And who knew it would have served me so well over the last couple of years. Diversity of thought should be encouraged and honored, not ridiculed and suppressed. I'm sharing my input respectfully as food, of thought, or as food for thought as you prepare to select our new superintendent. I believe that most parents send their kids to school for academic success, so I hope that is the lens through which you'll be selecting our new superintendent. And I genuinely wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hanson. That was all three names on my list. Does anybody else care to adjust the board? just address a couple things um, one on going into closed session by my count the last two times that we voted into go, go into closed session we've voted seven to zero or six to zero so by my count that's a two-thirds vote which is what's required uh, but if you have documentation that's otherwise happy to take it from you um, Brian, do you do you mind addressing the May seventh election and and uh, the enhancement millage and what we've been talking about at the last few board meetings and specifically what the May seventh is? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, several board meetings back, the board adopted the resolution to place our operating millage on the May seventh ballot, and that has two components. It has the non homestead and also a hold harmless millage as well too. Um, the board meeting prior to your voting, I'd done a presentation for you all as well too, um, and there will be forthcoming information that'll be published in the new Our Schools newsletter coming out as well. So um, we are also in development of putting lots of information on our website. And then finally, Ms. Hansen, I'm a true believer in public schools because they are the greatest equalizer in our society. They allow for literacy and academic achievement above all. There's a reason that we're called the Board of Education and not the Board of anything else. The goals of this district are to make sure that there's a level playing field for all of our students. And if there are barriers to entry such that our students can show up ready to learn, we're going to address those. That's the lens that I view DEI through and if there are if there are simple things that we can do to make sure that students come to school fed ready to learn warm clothes and are not judged by the color of their skin but by what they achieve in the classroom once they have all the tools available to them that's what our mission is as a district so I think we're in violent agreement how we approach that and how we talk about it, we need to grow a common understanding and more than happy to have that conversation with you. But I think we're in, in agreement that that is the goal of the district, is literacy, academic achievement, and building good citizens of our community. So happy to address it more afterwards. Um, that'll close our I had one thing for that yep um, what we are doing in, in May is a renewal of how many times in a row <coughs> our operating millage we are renewing that's correct it was originally adopted in 1994 and we've done it every 10 years since sir okay so that is not anything new um, our bond of what's coming up we are barely even started really we don't have a spot. We can't even guess which, which uh, election we would put a reservation on because we have to reach out to the people and we are going to have focus groups and do things similarly to our superintendent search. So we have a long haul ahead of us for that. So we don't have anything that we could even dream up a date for, for a, a vote for a bond. Just so you and everybody else is aware, we have, we have a lot of work to do for that. Good point. Thank you, Brad. Um, so we're going to move into uh, 
item number three, which is the leadership profile and survey summary. So we have Mike Ritchie from HYA that's going to join us. So thanks, Dave. Hi, Mike. You hear us? Hey, Mike. Can you hear us? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yep. 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 So All good? Yeah. Thank All you for joining us. Uh, we'll turn it over to you, Mike. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I know you've got some other agenda items tonight. So, what we I guess tonight serves two purposes. So first of all, I want to just kind of briefly go through the profile report with you to see if you have any questions or concerns or anything I can answer. And then I just want to review the rest of the search schedule. Um, and again, if you have any questions for me uh, regarding the search, I can certainly answer those questions. I think you have a copy of the report in front of you, correct? Correct. Yes. All right. So. You had some great participation. I spent three days uh, in Midland on January 9th, 10th, and 11th. Had wonderful uh, focus groups, and you had we had 21 focus groups all together. You know, a total of 225 uh, stakeholders did participate, and then you had 1,246 uh, take the online survey. So your participation uh, was really, really good. So, as you can see in the report. <coughs> Again, think think of a candidate trying to read the report. So the way it's laid out, it talks about the description of the district, which is basically uh, the job posting. And then we go into those desirable characteristics. And those came from common themes that we heard uh, across the different uh, focus groups. And I'm not going to read this to you, um, but, but you can see that, you know, communication was a really important piece, um, transparency. Um, build the, the, the level of trust as well. And then we get into what were those top visionary um, things that the leader had to have. Also, what in the communication area uh, were you looking for? And then um, what experience does the person need to have uh, as to be uh, focused for that new uh, leader? And then we broke the report down into four different areas. So the first area is the community. And then we talked about, the community talked about the common themes for the strengths. Um, obviously, people are very passionate in the district, family-focused, values education. Um, they thought the district did a great job financially. Um, they talked a lot about the fund balance. Um, but some people did also mention that the fund balance was too healthy, and so they wanted to use that as, uh, um, you know, uh, I guess a concern um, or a challenge as well. But, but but very proud of the fact that they had a, a healthy fund balance. Um, lots of opportunities for students; they can thrive, and then a well-skilled, educated uh, community that has very high expectations. Um, for the district. Uh, the challenges that the community mentioned, um, they thought the district did a really nice job um, with the 80% uh, of the students that were in the middle, but they referred to the bottom 10% and top 10% um, where they needed to do some more um, focus as well. Um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. There seems to be a strong focus on the top and bottom 10%. And then the, the students in the middle, um, although they're getting by, they, they seem to get less less attention as the top 10% and the bottom 10%. Um, a, a concern um, from the community was the, the, the nonprofit group. Um, they have a lot to offer, and they just felt that they, the district could form a better partnership uh, with the nonprofits and help get the word out because there are resources available for students, uh, but, but a lot of the parents might not know about it. 
And so they really wanted to have a stronger partnership um, with the district. Of course, the big challenge is going to be the facilities, you know, the upgrades, uh, the aging buildings, and then uh, how do we rebound from uh, what we lost during COVID uh, was a big concern as well. And then also, um, they said the district is definitely, definitely improving on communication and transparency, uh, but there's still a little ways uh, to go with that. And then you can see on page eight, well, all the bullet points, those were uh, items that are recorded. Um, most of those were repeated more than one time, and so they did make the, the bullet point list. It just gives you an idea. It might not have been common themes, but they were mentioned uh, a couple of different times. And then those desired characteristics, looking for those one or two word phrases uh, that people want. Uh, that's in the bottom of page eight. And then um, when you get to the other chart in the middle of page eight, those were still characteristics, but they were they were more than just one or two words. So I kind of try, I tried to capture um, you know the phrase that they that they said. And then as we go into the board, um, the board felt that there's a very strong uh, community support. Um, expectations are high. Um, good first step in hiring a director of DEI, and then uh, very strong uh, teaching staff, and then. Um, the community is definitely dedicated to the success of the school district. The challenges that the board mentioned, um, meeting those expectations of the community. Um, the community expects a lot out of the school district. Uh, the aging infrastructure uh, was a big concern. Um, the two high schools are not operating at the same level. Maybe the performance level might be different. You've got two very unique high schools that they're different. Uh, declining enrollment was a concern, and then I captured uh, the Midland. Midland can be a tough place for someone uh, from the outside to fit in, but once they build that trust and that they, they show they're committed to the district or the city, uh, they are welcomed with open, uh, open arms. And then again, on page 11, we've got the characteristics. Moving on to the staff. Um, a strong reputation, um, a programming across the district. Uh, families wanted to move into the district. They moved there because of the school district. Um, this one you don't hear too often, so you should be you, you need to be real proud of uh, that number two. Um, there's a good professional working relationship between the administration and the union, um, and, and that came up more than once. So that was really nice to hear that. Uh, the, again, DEI is moving in the right direction, but it does have a ways to go. You want, they wanted to make sure that the, the district walks the talk when it comes to DEI. Um, felt there's a lot of powerful, influential people in the district uh, in a good way. Again, making making the district accountable um, to really offer a robust education. And then the pre-primary building uh, was also uh, considered to be a strength. The challenges that the staff brought up, again, facilities was a big concern. Um, that was probably the biggest one they brought up. Um, the ESSER money, they talked a little bit about the fund balance, but then when the ESSER money, the COVID money, the federal money, whatever you want to call it, that goes away September 2024, uh, that could have play a big impact on the financial uh, state of the district. Uh, the staff also felt that the communication between teachers, staff, and the administration might not be the best. Uh, again, it's, the communication is getting better, they said. Um, this was a big one. The paraprofessional support staff, um, they thought that the pay was not what it should be for your support staff. And this didn't come from just support staff. This came from other groups as well. And the, big, the easiest way to compare the support staff pay it's a lot easier for a support staff person to get a job uh, in the community that probably pays more. And um, take a para, for example, a special ed para, who might get kicked, bit, uh, might pull their hair. They might they might have a tough day at work, uh, and then they're going to make you know seventeen, eighteen dollars an hour or whatever it is. They can go to a local small business and make more money. Or, or the same amount of money, but not have to do what they do in that day-to-day -day grind. So that's kind of what, what they brought up. Um, 
And then they said there's a lot of new initiatives, and someone actually mentioned there are 26 new new initiatives uh, since 2016. So although the, the initiatives were good, they hope that the new leader just focuses on some of the things that they have and not forces any new initiatives uh, upon the district as, as they get started. And then the student section on page uh, 15, um, the students again uh, gave uh, I me mean, a great uh, great information. Uh, they felt that the a range of challenging academic courses really prepares them well. They did praise their teachers. Um, they they liked the teachers. They said the teachers were really good. They do a great job. They liked the involvement and the leadership opportunities they get across the district. Um, the teachers really care about the students, um, and then they liked. Um, they felt safe at school. They felt the schools were all safe. And then they liked getting out that communication uh, every Monday that, that they do receive. Some of the concerns the students had, they do wish they would have the opportunity to take more classes at the other high school. And they didn't specifically name what high school, but they felt if they were at one high school and classes were offered in the other high school, they would like to be able to take some other classes as well. Um, they like the diversity uh, work, but they said make sure it's just not a word being used, but it's valued. Um, and then they would they want to see more of a diverse staff as well. They thought that the staff they could use more diversity. Um, and then a, a, a number four was a repeated theme in, in quite a few of the groups, but I really emphasize it in the high school group. Um, they felt there's a shortage of counselors across the district, not just at the high school. Um, and it was hard to get a hold of them because there's so few. And then they would like to see a better way to give feedback uh, throughout the district. They want their voices heard. And um, they just would like to be aware of when some of the changes are coming. And then I also highlighted a couple other things that they mentioned. So on 16, you can see that there's some bullet points done towards the bottom. The students felt very strongly about they wanted to give feedback uh, or like an evaluation or a survey on the teaching staff. And so like think back to the college days when you're in college, uh, you always got to evaluate that teacher at the end of, of, the, of that class. And so the, the, they wanted a voice in being able to give constructive criticism um, to how the teaching methods went uh, in, the, in the class as well. Um, and then we, we talked about the characteristics of the next superintendent. And again, they had some. They really want a superintendent that listens to the students. Um, they want someone that takes the initiatives to ask questions about the day of the life at school. Um, they said if the person has kids, they really want the, the his or her kids to be attending uh, the Midland, Midland Public Schools. Uh, they wanted a level-headed person that keeps emotions and personal life outside of his his or her decision making. They really felt strongly about they want to see the superintendent in the building, uh, not just a picture on Twitter, but they actually want to see the person walking the halls or going into the classrooms. Uh, more involved with students, and check in and ask questions. And someone, someone that understands parents' schedules. And so one of the examples they gave, they had a Chromebook pick up at the middle school or the middle of the day on a Tuesday. And they say, well, what parent can pick up Chromebooks on Tuesday in the middle of the day? And so just watch out, watch the schedules when you put out schedules. And then someone that can be flexible, adapt to the needs of the students. And then um, someone that they feel that they can be comfortable sending an email to. Um, so they wanted to be able to email the superintendent if they had if they had a concern. So I thought that was worth, worth capturing as well. So that's... That's the report in a nutshell. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions from any board members at the moment? Mike, is this leadership profile just for us or is this something that goes that potential candidates can see? No, so the, so the plan would be you would accept it tonight and I've already had four or five candidates ask for it. Because people that apply for a job through HYA, they know it's coming, but we do not release it until you accept it or we go through it with the board. So no one has seen this except the board at this point. But I do have a couple of people. And if you remember, I told you that the better 
candidates usually tend to apply at the end of the search. So they want to read through the report before they apply. It might not be a deal breaker if someone applies or not, doesn't apply, but they want to at least be able to see what's in the report before they submit their name. And so and currently you have um, five completed applications, but you also have seven you can see. I can see that they're not quite finished yet. So you've got a total right now of, of 12 um, that are in frontline. I believe five are, are in your portal. I've talked to a few other people, again, that I know they're going to apply, but they're just waiting for the report to come out as well. And the position does close on February 18th. So we're getting now to where we should see, we should see some more applications come in over the next couple of weeks. Other questions on the report at all? I just got a couple more comments I want to make. So then, on February 20th, the plan is I will be there in person uh, to present the slate. It's easy to present this leadership report over uh, over Zoom. Um, you know, you had it beforehand, you could read through it. But when we, we get into that slate, especially if you get, you know, quite a few applicants, it's much easier to do that in person versus Zoom. So my plan is to be there on the 20th in person uh, to present that slate. And then we'll talk about uh, tier one, tier two, tier three, and we'll also um, we'll also go through uh, what that first round of interviews will look like today in the district, and those final interviews as as well. And then um, reminder of the rest of the schedule: it looks like February 26th and 28th um, will be the first round interviews. The week of March 11th will be the day in the district. So again, when I'm there on the 20th, we're going to want to nail down. Uh, those days in the district. So right now it's just the week of March 11th. And then the final interview are scheduled for March uh, 20th, I believe. So that is the rest of your schedule. So any other comments about the search or questions about the search? All right. So um, Mike, you want us to take action on the leadership profile report at this time, correct? Yeah, just so you 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 accept or approve the report from HYA. Most people just accept it. <laughs> I'll take a motion for the board to accept um, the leadership profile report as presented. I Support. Second. Uh, motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. Any further comments or questions? I think I'll just say, you know, this is a gift from our community, and there's a heck of a lot of information in here to digest. So thank you to everybody that participated. Um, there's really good stuff for the board to work on as well. And one thing I will remind us of, right, is there's a there is a a, a a line between us and the administration, right? So we'll let the administration work on what they need to work on, and then we can work on certain things as a board. But um, all right. So I had a motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. All in favor of accepting the uh, leadership profile report? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries six zero. Uh, anything else, Mike, for you? Nope, that's all I have. It'll be kind of quiet now for the next two weeks. We, just so you know, we actually vet, we pre-screen, we Zoom with every single applicant. So that's what we're doing right now. We're doing all of our Google searches. So you won't hear much from me other than maybe on Monday mornings I'll put a quick update in that portal. Um, just a couple different bullet points, but uh, we're just um, going to do the screening and vetting and, and getting ready for the uh, 20th. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Mike. Oh, you, you're welcome. So have a great rest of your meeting, and uh, sorry about that football game last night. <laughs> I thought I had forgotten it about it. cheering hard for the Lions, yeah. hard. Anyone with San Francisco. Yeah. But no, that's too bad. Well, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. All right. Everyone. Have a good have a good night. Thanks, Mike. Yep.
All right, at this time we'll move into section four, administrative services. Um, I have committee reports. So members present were myself, Jennifer Ringgold, Superintendent Miller Nelson, Associate, Associate Superintendents Bertin and Jaster, and then Sarah also joined us. Um, through an annual policy updates at the January 29th, 2024 Board of Education meeting, Superintendent Miller Nelson will bring forward for action to the Board of Education policy changes to several MPS policies as recommended by through and law updates. Policy revisions are provided to the committee members with time to review. Committee members ask questions and got clarification during the meeting. Superintendent Miller Nelson and Administrative Services Committee members discuss the following board policies um, that have proposed changes, and those numbers are listed in your agenda packet. Uh, the policies to, pre to be presented for action at the January 29th, 2024 board meeting will be included, um, at, at, excuse me, they were included before the meeting for you to review. And then the next administrative services meeting will be scheduled as needed. Um, so item 4.2 is for action policy update resolution. I will ask Penny to provide a couple extra comments as well. Good evening, everyone. We have, uh, as you know, a bundle of policy updates. And I want to draw your attention to the fact that there is a resolution and then a motion for these. Uh, the time sensitive nature of these with some legis legislative changes is why we have it on tonight's agenda. So I appreciate uh, the opportunity to do that. I'll draw your attention to the fact that the resolution ensures that specific timelines are met. There are a portion of the policies that uh, become effective July 1st of 2024 and we need to, those are denoted with an R. And so this resolution allows us to keep our current policies active uh, for those particular ones, uh, 4402, 03, 05, 09, and 4503. Uh, and then it allows um, for those to sunset on June 30 and those new ones to come into effect on July 1. That's the rationale for the resolution. Any questions for Penny on that part? So we have two actions. One is for the resolution, which is specific to the timeline for when, when policies take place pursuant to change of Michigan law. And then the second one is um, to actually approve the policy revisions. So can I have a motion for item 4.2, the policy update resolution? Uh, I move that we adopt uh, item 4.2, the pol policy update resolution, as proposed. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by Ringgold. Any questions or comments on 4.2, the resolution? I'm, I have this look on my face because typically when we have a resolution, we read that aloud. Uh, and then take action on the resolution. And yep. um, I don't have that document. I have the resolution in front of me, but the original source document. So I think for the sake of just ensuring that we're aligned, Phil, if you would read the resolution, as yep. painful as that might be. That's all right. I'll Thank you. Oh, do you have the paper? Because I can pull it up. I just have a question for Patty. Yes. This is what we went through last time. The resolution, we, we adopted this resolution last time. Do you recall? We did not. Typically okay. when we, um, I am still on, typically when we do policy updates, it's simply just a motion okay. to accept the new policies and those replace the old ones. This resolution is specific to the nuance with those dates, okay. which is why we have that. Okay. Thank you. And just for your peace of mind, of course, this, uh, this resolution uh, accompanied that policy packet from uh, True. Sorry, Phil, go ahead. That's all right. <laughs> I had to take a drink first. <laughs> a special me meeting of the Board of Education was held in the Midland Public Service or Midland Public Schools Administration <coughs> Center within the boundaries of the district on 
the 29th day of January 2024 at 6 o'clock p.m. The meeting was called to order by myself as president. Members present were Ringgold, Blazy, McFarland, Rausch, Hatfield, and Horowitz. Member Hatfield was absent. The following preamble and resolution were offered by Member Hatfield and support by Member Ringgold. Whereas <clears throat> following recent legislative changes, the board identified a need to review its current board policy for corresponding updates and whereas the district's administration has reviewed the through and law firm policy manual updates and recommends the policy manual updates for consideration in the form presented for board review and approval to replace the board's existing policies listed below. <clears throat> and whereas the administration has reviewed any and all legal settlements and resolution agreements between the district and any state or federal agency as applicable that address the modification or agency review of existing board policy and the board has <clears throat> considered the impact of those settlements or agreements when recommending adoption of the policy manual updates and whereas the administration recommends that the board adopt the policy manual update as outlined below and whereas the board has carefully reviewed considered and evaluated the policy manual updates collectively by the administrative services committee and as individual board members and the administration's recommendation now therefore be it resolved that one the board accepts the administration's recommendation to adopt the policy manual updates to the following uh, existing board policies are hereby <coughs> repealed and replaced with the corresponding policy manual updates policy 4108 4207 4404 4407 4408 and 4504 Number three, the board hereby adopts the policy manual updates that correspond with the board policies listed in paragraph two in the form presented and recommended by the administration as new policies for the purpose of governing the district. Number four, <clears throat> the following existing board policies are hereby repealed effective June 30th, 2024 and replaced with the corresponding po policy manual updates, policies 4402, 4403, 4405, 4409, and 4503. Number five, the board hereby adopts effective July 1, 2024, the following policy manual updates in the form presented and recommended by, the administ by administration as new policies for the purpose of governing the district Policies 4402R, 4403R, 4405R, 4409R, and 4503R. Number six, the administration shall promptly review district publications and forms that may reference the now repealed board policies and revise those publications and any forms as necessary to align with the newly adopted policy manual within 30 to 60 calendar days after this resolution. All resolutions and parts of this of resolutions insofar as they conflict with the provisions of this resolution B and the same are hereby rescinded. <clears throat> this does recall require roll call vote. So Bill, can I make a quick correction for the record? You indicated yep. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I was looking down at who made the motion. So. Thank you. Um, thank you. All right. So, roll call vote. Yes. All right. President Rausch? Aye. Uh, Vice President McFarland? Aye. Secretary Hatfield is an aye. Uh, Treasurer Lauterbach is not here. Member Blazy? Aye. Member Ringgold? Aye. Member Horowitz? Aye. 
All right. Six in the affirmative and uh, one not here. The resolution is declared adopted. Okay. Penny, do you want to take item 4.3 then? Or? Yeah, I'll just offer it is um, <clears throat> the next bundle of those policy updates uh, as shared with the Administrative Services Committee and with all of you uh, for review. And you can see uh, all of those particular policies listed there. Again, these reflect just some technical changes, formatting changes uh, that Troon identified. And then um, several of them are related to legislative updates. And these will all become effective upon your approval. Okay, take a motion to approve uh, through in 2023 policy revisions in item 4.3. I move to approve the through in policy revisions from 2023. Is it 2023 or 2024? Uh, they are. They're actually dated 2023 Three. because okay. they were released yep. at the end of 2023. Perfect. Great question. Yep. The 2023 through and policy revisions to take effect. Support. Motion by Ringgold, support by McFarland. Any questions or comments on 4.3? Yeah, I'm not <clears throat> sure that the language is totally accurate for that because we have Troon recommended and two administration recommended. So I don't believe that that motion doesn't cover everything. doesn't cover what we are approving. Okay, thank you. Could you say that again? We have Troon recommended, which is the majority of it, and then the administration brought forward two of their own that they are recommending for adoption. That is correct. Yes. So I think that it needs to say whether it's two motions or it is a modified motion that I'm, needs to be. I'm happy to modify the motion to accept um, the 2023 through and policy revisions as well as administrative recommendations. Okay. For two. Yeah. And then I had questions on the two from administration. Go Sorry, ahead. I think we need a second. Okay, go so, ahead. So we have the modified motion from member Ringgold and then do we have support for the modified motion? Support. Support by Hatfield. Sorry, Brad. Go ahead. All right. Um, I'd like more clarification on the administrative recommendations for those two policies, um, specifically really the graduation attire. If I could get some more information on that, please. Yeah, I'll kick it off and then uh, hope I see Jeff grabbing his mic. So uh, as you know, Mr. Daster works most closely with our high schools when it comes to our commencement ceremony. And we've had, I would say, some um, confusion in the past about appropriate attire. So we felt that adding language to the policy would clarify our expectations for what is acceptable and just provide some criteria by which then we can uh, ensure consistency. Jeff, what would you add? Well, that, that's basically it. Um, but the history is that over the last few years, um, and this typically uh, unfolds right before the ceremony, unfortunately. So what, what we are trying to do is conduct a ceremony that um, is not about the individual. It's more about the collective, the group. And so the idea of a school-issued commencement uniform has been what we feel is the best practice there versus everybody um, who may have a flair for fashion or other things that they want to, you know, talk about or preach about. We, we want it to be focused on the group and the achievements of the group. And so that's really where that language is intended to land. And I think, um, I think that is, it, I don't have it in front of me, but I think that's what I recall, school issued commencement uniform to participate. And where do we acquire the school-issued commencement uniform from? So our students, uh, chime in, Jeff, can order their cap and gown okay. yeah, per the specifications of the school, so it's the right color and, yeah, yeah. and all of that. And then the medallions, the uh, stoles. stoles are issued by the school. Yeah. Okay. Is there 
assistance Yes, yeah. scholarship or there's ways to cover those. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, what um, what does something like that cost? Ooh, I, it's been many years um, since I've <laughs> looked at the cost, so I couldn't comment 30. without. Last year, thirty dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Recent memory. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And we use different vendors for that, or how does that come about, and who we choose to do that? I might not have the yeah. knowledge Over the years, we have had different vendors. There's been bid processes most recently. And for many of these, once you uh, have gone out for a bid, we've tried to enter into a multiple year kind of a agreement with these companies. But as those, um, again, have changed with different administrations even, and, and for a period of time, each high school had a different vendor. so. I, w I couldn't say that it's been consistent across the board. It's changed many times. Okay. So we don't really have, we have a policy on what, we're making a resolution on what they can wear, which is going to be something provided by the district that they have to pay for. I'm just, trying to get the details on this so that we're making a resolution of of what kids have to spend more money on something. Actually, it's our standing practice has been yeah. that students purchase their cap and gown yeah. and that's yeah. what's required. Yeah. And again, mm -hmm. if they yeah. don't have the financial wherewithal for that, we support them in the process. This is really, frankly, to clean up some of the extraneous things that students might want to pile on. As Jeff said, ensuring that we have a certain level of uh, appropriateness. So yes, you can wear your district issue, your district uh, required stole, cap gown, stole, medallion, cords. You may not, without permission, if it's not district issue, wear other cords, lanyards, stoles, decorate your cap. We're trying to keep it within a criteria. Okay. Questions what was the other administration one? I can't remember. It was yes. the oh, go go. Nope, go ahead. Uh, it was for um, policy 3202, and that was adopting optional language that Truman's always had, and we've never adopted it around maintaining uh, a fund balance. Got it. Yep. And I know we spoke with that at FFO. Okay. And to, to make clear on 5410, the commencement attire, that we've had 5410 on the books. It, this mm -hmm. is a clarification of the language to address issues that Jeff was talking about. The district issued yeah. was the clarification. Yeah. Good questions. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions to address? I did have a question. Um, For spe for she's talking emergency. about the emergency, oh, the emergency though. The emergency when we've had to do it in the past, it, it, Scott can talk to it better, but I think you had to reach out to each board yeah. member individually. Yes. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it was always individually, never like a group chat, and, and uh, it worked well, and that was uh, the past practice as long as I've known it to be. Yeah. Good question. Any other 
comments or discussion? So I think I'll take it not from here, but kick it back to FFO that I would like a uh, little discussion about possibly the district paying for commencement gowns if we wanted to at least discuss it. Okay. 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 So then it's very easy that we provide it, you wear it, mm -hmm. that's all that you can wear. And in the shape then form that we give it to you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, all in favor of approving the the uh, amendment or the proposal that Ms. Stringle made to adopt the Thrun and administration suggestions for policy revisions, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Okay, uh, that concludes our uh, open meeting topics. We do have uh, section five, which is closed session for consideration of, com of a complaint pursuant to section eight, one A of the Michigan Open Meetings Act, MCL 15.26881A. Take a motion to go into closed session. I move that we go into closed session with a roll call vote. All right. Voting on the motion to go into closed session. For, for consideration of the complaint. For consideration of this complaint. Uh, President Rausch. Aye. Vice President McFarland. Aye. Secretary Hatfield is an aye. Member Blazy. Aye. Member Ringel. Aye. Member Horowitz. Aye. Six in favor. Okay. We are now in closed session. All right, <clears throat> we're now back in open session. Uh, okay, I will move to give the board president authority to communicate to the association in writing that the grievance is denied. Motion by McFarland. Second. Support by Horowitz. All right. Is there any discussion or clarification? Okay. We'll take a roll Remember call vote. Uh, President Rausch? Aye. Vice President McFarland? Aye. Secretary Hatfield is aye. Treas uh, Member Blazy? Aye. Member Ringgold? Aye. Member Horowitz? Aye. All right. Six in the affirmative. Okay. Um, just say. Uh, Thank you on two two accounts. One is from Chartwells for this lovely gift basket for School Board Appreciation Month, and then I also wanted to acknowledge a very kind gift uh, that the MCA has made on our behalf to sponsor three um, Olympians to the Special uh, Special Olympics this summer uh, in our name. So, yeah. big thank you to the MCA for doing that. Any other? Notes before we adjourn? Take a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Motion by McFarland, support by Horowitz. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Stand adjourned. <laughs>